What's happening? Brian Tong here with all your Googleicious. It's everything Google that we can pack inside of a show. Now, it's not the biggest news week this week, but we start off with an update on Google's self driving cars after its first accident that involved injuries. Now, it was nothing serious other than some minor whiplash, but a post by the director of the project, Chris Ermson, talks about how their cars are being hit surprisingly often, but not because of errors by their own cars, but because of human error by other drivers. Now, since 2009, Google's self driving cars have been involved in 14 accidents with a 25 car fleet that has driven over 1.9 million miles. There's never really been a real number based on accidents per miles driven because over half of all car crashes are never even reported. So they're really hoping their driverless car project can also give them some more accurate information. All right, Google continues to make moves to do really anything and everything. A Recode report says the Big G is hiring the technical team that built HomeJoy, a service that matches people with professional home cleaners. Now, a report from earlier this year said Google was looking to launch a tool for people to compare local home repair services for plumbers, electricians, roofers, and other handyman jobs, so the brain power behind HomeJoy will most likely be building this out. Now, we don't know if it will be a standalone service or integrated into search, but one thing is certain, coming soon, you'll be seeing a lot more of this. Thanks, Google. All right, according to Bloomberg, the Googs is on track to launch their paid YouTube service by the end of this year. Content always drives these things, and their top partners that account for 90% of its views are on board, but the major TV networks are still holding out like Fox, NBC, and CBS. According to YouTube's terms, YouTube stars can't make their videos public or monetize them unless they agree to be part of this service, so for them, it's a no-brainer. But the challenge is getting original content that's worth paying for. Netflix has done it, and it's now up to YouTube to figure that out. All right, some pretty sweet developments on the smartphone front. Samsung, Apple, and other phone manufacturers are in talks with cell carriers to create a SIM card similar to the one that Apple's iPad that lets a user sign up for a service plan of their choice on a single model of hardware. Now, this would make life easier for everyone instead of manufacturing different phone models that support each different cell carrier. The idea would be an embedded universal SIM card that's built into the phone and not user accessible. You would be able to sign up for any service, but also switch them at any time as well. The goal is to start rolling this out sometime in 2016. Samsung has also announced its super slim Galaxy Tab S2 measuring in at 5.6 millimeters. That's half a millimeter thinner than the current iPad Air. The Tab S2 will come in either 9.7 inch or 8 inch screen sizes with a 2084 by 1536 resolution super AMOLED display that's newly optimized, as they say, for better contrast and natural colors. It will also get Samsung's improved fingerprint scanner, an 8 megapixel rear camera, 3 gigs of RAM, expandable memory storage, and LTE and Wi Fi models. Now, there's no release date or pricing that's been revealed just yet. And if you're an Xperia Z3 owner, that lives in Sweden and owns a Windows PC and also must be willing to completely wipe your phone of its personal setting, data, and content. If this sounds like you, you are in luck. So that narrows it down to like five people. Sony is looking for people to test their new Android concept software between mid-July and September, but will not reveal any specifics or even a hint at what it will look like. Now, no other device will work, and customers from other countries will not be able to join either, but I think a word of advice would be to get as close to stock Android as possible. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.